Good morning. Good morning. 안녕하세요. 좋은 아침입니다. Hello and, and good morning in Korean as well. Um, wow, it's, it's such a blessing to be here. It's such a blessing to see the Olympians up here and, and to hear about how y'all have been doing. And uh, I remember being in the same room with a lot of the same same verses, I'm sure, that we were memorizing and even uh, receiving some of these these uh, uh, the awards there and just uh, what a blessing to be to be a part of that and to be a part of this the heritage of this church as well. It's, so praise praise the Lord for that. Um, I'd like to share with you. I have a lot on my heart this morning, and uh, I know that some of you have already heard some of the things that, that have happened in Korea the last couple years since uh, last year and a year and a half since we've been with you. And so I'd like to share a little update about what the Lord has done. And then uh, really, I, I'd like to, to share what's on my heart. Um, it's something that God has been teaching me for this past year as well, that I think is something that all of us need to be reminded of as well. Uh, so uh, first, let me just, just uh, share some things with you. Uh, uh, remembering uh, why we're in Korea, I know we've already mentioned that as well. God's, God's grace toward us uh, to let us know of His Son and uh, of the, the forgiveness that He freely gives, this gift of eternal life that's free and that He, he gives. And there are people around the world who don't know and so uh, for, for Crystal and I, when we first, uh, we, were, we met at the Word of Life Bible Institute in New York, and as we were there, we heard about Asia in particular, the incredible need in Asia, how many people there are, how few of them know the gospel, and yet we know the gospel, and they don't. And, and so it's just, it, we were pursuing, how could we, how could we help? What could we do to make a difference there? And... I ended up moving to South Korea with the goal of making disciples of young men and young women and seeing them grow and go around the world, especially in, to, to Asia, to Asian countries. And so that's, that's still why we're there serving. In particular, there's a need among young people. Uh, in this generation in Korea, uh, there's 3.8% of teens that go to church. There's a, a very, very low percentage. And it's even less among young adults. And uh, they, they need hope. Young people there need hope. There are a, lot, there are a number of different issues, uh, suicide being, being one of them. Uh, very much this, this atmosphere of the purpose of my life is to, to, to get a good education, to get a good job, and, and life is all about that. And if I can't fit into that, then I don't have, I, I don't have a purpose. I don't have a reason to live. And so as we have been serving there in South Korea, uh, we've been working with, with Word of Life there, it, uh, very, very very much so a part of this, this church and, and uh, the heritage of this church as well. Um, but as we're there, our goal is to empower or strengthen, to, to serve and equip local churches to ignite a, a movement among young people so that they would reach their, their generation and Korea and Asia for Christ. And so it's not, uh, we're not coming and, and trying to do something separate apart from local churches, but really to, to how can we serve and to help uh, churches so that, so that more and more young people who are, there are a lot of young people, they're all in, in schools and, and all around uh, in, in different, what we call hagwon, it's like a cram school, after school uh, school. So they go to school and then they go to school as well. But, the, but they're, the young people are there, but, but they're not uh, hearing the good news about Jesus and of the love that God has for them. And so what we're seeking to do there is to, to work with churches to help every single young person. Our prayer and our goal is that every teen in Korea would hear the gospel from a friend. And every teen in Korea growing in their walk with Christ. And so in order for that to happen, the, the, the friends, right, they have to know the gospel so that they and, and to be trained and equipped and encouraged to uh, share the gospel in a conversation with their friends. And uh, that might seem like a, a crazy goal. I, I remember being a teenager and thinking, how can I possibly share with, with, with my friends this, this message? And, 
And so, uh, as we're seeking to do that, uh, we, we, need, we need your prayer, and you guys are really, you're a part of what, what uh, we've been doing in Korea. We're, uh, we're a part of this, this church, and you, we're just an extension of Covington Bible Church in another part of the world, and uh, we really, uh, we couldn't be do, doing what we're doing without this church and, and people like you, churches like this, that have partnered uh, with us and, and with this ministry. Uh, so we, we have a privilege of serving with a wonderful team in, in South Korea. Uh, this was a, a couple years ago, um, but uh, we're serving in two main locations. One is on the main peninsula uh, in Pyeongtaek, and that's where our family lives, uh, just south of Seoul there. It's very close to Seoul. And then also there's the, the World Life Bible Institute on Jeju Island. And uh, just to share a couple of things of, of what that looks like, what the ministry overall looks like in Korea, uh, first, we, we serve young people through camps, just like here uh, in the States. You have, there's a camp down in Florida. There's a camp uh, with Word of Life, at least in, in uh, New York. And uh, there are other uh, Christian camps all, all around. Uh, in Korea, we're, we, we do uh, camp as well as, as reaching out to young people in uh, where they are, going to, to the schools uh, and, and inviting them as well to evangelistic events uh, that we put on for them. Uh, at camp, we have a lot of fun, uh, and yet a lot of people in Korea, education is so important that uh, it's, a, it's a draw. So uh, some of you might want to go to a sports camp, maybe soccer or basketball or something. I remember going to a basketball camp one time up in New York uh, when I was growing up, and in Korea they have English camp, and that's just... Uh, it's for some reason that's an exciting thing, and uh, we we happen to know English uh, decently. Uh, I did mostly grow up here, so. Uh, but we have camps down on Jeju Island as well as on the mainland. Just the the last two years, uh, camps on the mainland open up again, and so we're we're praising the Lord for the, for that, uh, for His hand on that. This is a picture of of, of uh, one of the girls here. Uh, here on the on the right, uh, she came to camp and she trusted Christ. And uh, so, first time understanding uh, the good news about Jesus and and trusting Him, made a profession of faith. And so, uh, at the end, uh, the last day, we had a ceremony like this, and we gave her a flower, uh, just uh, celebrating with her. And she was really surprised about that. Uh, and Kira, our oldest daughter, she's 12 now. She was this was her first time at English camp. And she did, she did pretty good at English camp there. Uh, she, she, was, she was a camper, but a helper too. So um, this is also on the, on the mainland at a local park we went to. Uh, last year when we were here, uh, it, was, it was in January. I think the second Sunday in January we were here and just shared with you a prayer request and, and a vision of a goal that we would be able to move to a new ministry center on the mainland in Korea. The place where we were was outside of the city. It was small, and uh, we weren't able to use it during the summer or on the weekends. And we were praying to move into the city, closer to public transportation, to a place where we could be closer to teenagers and more accessible to people all around Korea, and that we could use all year round and the weekends included and summer included. And uh, so after we, we went back to Korea in February last year, we got back and we were looking for a place uh, and God opened up doors. I can tell you the story another time uh, of how the Lord opened up the doors uh, for that, that, that place. And we, we met there. We made a contract for, for the place. We met there. We, we, we prayed even where we were standing there uh, in particular that, that God would do a great work in that place that there would be young people that come to know Him, that there would be young people who'd be trained and uh, they would grow in their walk with Christ and they would go out from there to make disciples. And uh, as we prayed, we, we didn't know what God was going to do. In order to move in there, uh, we had to have the, the construction done. With the, we, we had to put walls up. We had to put uh, the classrooms, uh, bathrooms, kitchen, chapel room, all of that in there. And we didn't have the, the funds to do that at the time. And all of this during COVID, when COVID had exploded around the world, and we're wondering, okay, Lord, uh, this doesn't seem like a great time to, to, to raise funds for this kind of thing. And we didn't know what was happening. And yet, uh, God made it happen. Uh, we, we prayed and, and just shared that, that vision and the need. And, and God provided through His people in a, uh, 
amazing way at just the right time. Uh, if we, it was like a week before we had to start, if we didn't start construction at, at that time, it was about this time last year when we were, we had no idea what, what was going to happen. And we had to start construction like the first week of July, beginning of July to finish in time in August to start camp in August. And God provided just in time for us to have enough to, to, to sign a contract to start construction. Not to finish it, but to start it. And all along the way, we didn't have to stop. And it was, uh, it was finished enough. It wasn't totally finished, but it was finished enough to have camp there. Uh, the boys didn't have a sink in, in the bathroom for a couple, the first couple days of camp. Um, but that was all right. Uh, this is what it looks like uh, now. It's, it's finished on the inside, and uh, we've been... It's been a privilege to, every, every time we go there, it's just a reminder of uh, how God answers prayers, that God, uh, he, he does have, have a plan, and that, that uh, it's incredible to see that, that he's working as he wanted that to happen. And yet, uh, a big struggle recently has been uh, restriction-wise with COVID there in Korea. We, you can only have a, a private gathering of up to four people at a time, and uh, uh, j- just to give you a little context, for us, for our family being here in the States for the last few weeks, it's been incredibly freeing for us. Uh, the, the fresh air and, and seeing people. And I, I, I know that all of us, all of you uh, went through a lot of time as well, not being in, here in person and, and uh, always wearing masks and, and the different things. And, uh, but there in Korea, it's still, it's still going on in terms of that uh, restriction. And so right now we have the, the lowest number of students that we've ever had at SYME in the history of SYME. And so that's been a huge uh, challenge to us of, of how, what, what, what do we do uh, to keep, keep running and to keep making disciples in this kind of a context. And so that, that's a, it's an ongoing prayer request. And yet, as you see in a few minutes, God has been faithful even in the midst of these restrictions, and uh, we, we praise the Lord for that. But again, we were able to have camp last, uh, last summer in, in the, uh, the new ministry center as the Lord opened up doors for that, and there were a number of young people that, that came to know the Lord. He already answered prayers there. And there were a number of young people, even at SYME afterwards last fall, uh, that came to know the Lord and even shared the gospel with their friends, and some of their friends came to know the Lord. So God is, is already answering prayers. He's so good and faithful. Uh, so there we have, uh, in, the, in the overall ministry with Word of Life in Korea, there's camps going on, and there's also SYME. It's a discipleship training center. That's the, the pictures that you just saw of that. Um, in, the, in the new ministry center, uh, we're, the building that we're in is kind of a sports building. The basement is a, a pool uh, there's there's uh, exercise and the, the gym up on the, the level above us, and then there's a sushi restaurant at the top. So uh, it, all, it all goes well together, I guess. Um, and I, I could tell you stories of what what God has done, and um, and hopefully we'll even even this evening and as we've gathered together uh, to have uh, dinner at different times, um, we've we've shared some stories of what God has done, and a lot of our students who had come through. Uh, through camp would end up going on to to study uh, English and the Word of God at at the Discipleship Training Center there at SYME. And a lot of our SYME students end up going to the Word of Life Bible Institute on Jeju Island. And uh, we are praising the Lord for that. And we're we're also praising God that the the Bible Institute there on Jeju was able to stay open all throughout COVID. And uh, because it's it's on Jeju Island, it's kind of separate from the city. It's in a a more private location, and they could close off uh, the the property there. And uh, students have have been doing great, and uh, the team there has been doing well as well with uh, still running some camps in person, but then also doing online uh, ministry. And uh, teens have been uh, attending that as well online with the, the different games they do, and uh, and sharing the gospel and even counseling afterwards online. And uh, teens uh, coming to know the Lord that way. So all of this, as you can see it here on the screen, it's just that the ministry is designed and, and we're, our prayer is that through that we would be serving churches and that students would come from the church or, or, or come to Word of Life and then go to the church and, and uh, be, be better equipped then to, to grow 
And uh, I, I couldn't figure out a better way to do this. And so it might look a little bit crazy up there. But as, as I shared, uh, God, God provided an incredible way last year. And then here we are. And we don't have, it, it's like, God, fill, fill this, this facility, right, with people. And yet we can't have people. Uh, so how do we do that? And, and as we've prayed, Lord, this is your ministry. This is your, uh, your people. This is your harvest field. Uh, this is your world, and we know that you have a plan. We don't. We don't know. We don't ha- know all that you're doing or why you're doing all these things. But that's not necessarily for us to know. But we know you, and we know that you're good, and we know that you care, and we know that you're working. So what? What would you have us do? What? What do you want us to do? And uh, there are there are still a lot of people who are struggling, who are hurting. They they they're not meeting with people. They're kind of closed up in their homes. And so through that, we've had the opportunity to open up uh, several different small groups going on online. And so some of those would be a sh- quiet time sharing group online, uh, sometimes every day, sometimes once a week with alumni, with alumni leading alumni in this, uh, and then doing training. Some of that's in English, some of it's all in Korean, some of it's Bible studies. Uh, and even this past week, uh, we're, we're praising the Lord for how he opened up that, that now we, we're doing that with 50 students online. Uh, and some of them are, are teenagers that, that are in uh, local schools as well. So we, we praise God that this is happening. And not only are we through that, just not just a centralized ministry in two locations, but because of it, we're serving uh, through these, these different groups uh, in other places in the, in the main cities around Korea. And our prayer is that that would expand uh, even beyond. Uh, and we've, uh, we've seen that happen uh, as well in other countries where the Lord is using, because of COVID, that we never would have thought of doing this apart from COVID, but because of COVID and the limitations we have of doing in-person ministry, some ministries have just exploded. Uh, and, and God is working, and we, we praise the Lord for that. Um, we, that, that. That's just a short little glimpse of, of life, uh, of ministry, the, the past year, the past year and a half. And... Um, we're, we're privileged to, to be serving there and to be a, uh, part of the leadership of, of the ministry in Korea. And we, we do need your prayer. Uh, we need um, wisdom and, and strength and uh, just the right perspective as we, as we move forward in ministry. Um, I already shared with you, you know, how God provided for the ministry center and at, uh, how we're currently struggling with low student numbers and, and in person at least. Um, and yet what God is doing through discipleship groups and things online. Um, but I'd also like to share with you something that, that God's put on my heart and that God has been teaching me recently. Um, it's not easy to share. Um, but like I shared with you, last, last year God uh, did a great work. He answered many prayers. He provided in a big way, and it's kind of like a physical thing that when you go in, you see it right there. See? See, God, God did that. Um, but it's so easy to forget. And, and in, in the Christian life, and especially for, for you young, for you Olympians, right? You worked hard to memorize your verses, and you worked hard to, to do your quiet time and, and to, to grow in that. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And, and uh, the motto, I mean, of Covington Bible Church, and it's right out here on the sign and on, on the wall over here, we're in the delivery business. Right? And, and we're to, to use the resources that God has given us, all, all, all of them in every way, to make a maximum impact for His glory. And so that's why our family moved to Korea to, to be a part of that delivery service and to, to go and to, to share with what we have, to share it to the best of our ability, to, to live for Jesus in that sense. And uh, some, at some point along the way, over it's, it's a, we're... In our, it's going to be 10 years in December since we moved to Korea. 10 years. Uh, some point along the way of, of living for Jesus, of, of doing things for Jesus, which is a biblical thing, by the way, 2 Corinthians 5.15. He, he died for all so that those who, who live should no longer live for themselves, but for Him who loved them, gave Himself up for them. We should live for Jesus. 
And, but after, after so, many, so many years of doing that, and it, the, the focus got off of Christ and, and got onto what, can I, what, what do I need to do for Christ. And it got off of the, the love that, that He has for us and of the message itself and onto just, I just got to deliver it. And last year in particular, that, that kind of came to a head in, in my, my life. Uh, last year as we were working on uh, uh, the, this whole project of, of moving, and it's a big ordeal. Ministry was ongoing. COVID was going on. Crystal's father passed away in March. And we were, we were there in Korea. And uh, so uh, emotionally dealing with that, uh, going through the, the, the unknowns of, is God going to provide for this? Are we going to be able to do that? And as, as the leader of the ministry there, uh, feeling that pressure of, of uh, if, if this doesn't happen, that's on me and I have to, I have to do this. And I started to think, uh, to, be, to be worried, to be stressed about it, to be even overwhelmed. And I, I started to experience some, some signs of burnout. And, and uh, through that, you, you know, and, and I'm sharing this with you because I, I think that um, you know, it's not just something that, that uh, is just me. I think that many of us tend to do this. We tend to put it on ourselves. And this is what I have to do this for, for Jesus. I, I have to I have to live for him. I have to do that. And 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 if I don't, then then you know what, what's going to happen? And putting that burden on ourselves. Um, but honestly, it was a tough time. Uh, even during the construction, when when the fun as the funds were coming in and we're doing construction, and I was gone a lot from the family, uh, there was a lot there. And I began to look at my life. And, and think about what, what the Bible says about what the Christian life should look like. Well, Jesus said in John 14, 26, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. In the context of it being the Holy Spirit, the peace. We have peace. Christians ought to be uh, characterized by people of peace. We're not worried about things. We're at peace. We're at peace with God. and We're at peace with, with who, who God has made us to be. But I looked at my life and I don't have peace. And John 10.10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So, so here, here you are, Christians, believers in, in Christ, and, and you're, you're living for Jesus and doing all these things for Jesus, but, but do you have that abundant life? And I looked at my life and I don't know. John 15.11, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Not just like some, some joy, but that your joy may be full. Okay? Your life should be characterized by a life of joy and of praise and of worship to God. And I looked at my life. And I, I'm, not, I'm not very patient. I should be patient. I, I'm, not, I, I'm frustrated. I don't know if I have joy. I'm not, this isn't happening. This is not happening the way I think it should happen. Those are all symptoms. These are all things that are going on. And, and it's just the, these, something's not, something's missing. Something's missing. What? And as I began to, to think about that, um, and of course, we, we confess, we're, we're broken people. We are. And you might, you might look at me or, or Doug and think, oh, you know, oh, missionary, oh, pastor. Wow, they've they got to be super spiritual. Something, I'll put them, no. Just regular, normal people. It doesn't mean that you're more spiritual than anybody. And these are the basic things of, of Christianity, basic things of life. The first thing being that we're empty, that we're broken, that, that we, that we are, are hurting and we're in need of, of healing, that we are sinners and we're in need of a Savior, that, that we're, we're empty and we need filled, we need mended. That, and, and we need to confess that, we're empty. That, Jesus is full, okay? Uh, John 1, Jesus is full of grace and truth. He's full. And we can receive of His fullness. It's just, we're empty, Jesus is full. We can receive of His fullness, grace upon grace. John 1, it's right, right there, John 1, 16. 
we all have received of his grace, of, of his fullness, grace upon grace. So this is just a basic thing for us to understand, and yet we forget. I forgot. Ephesians chapter 3, and I know you guys are doing a study in, in uh, Ephesians, and, and I, I, I hope that I don't take any away of what you're going to do later, but and we're, the main thing I want to share with you is from Ephesians chapter 3, and I'm going to read Paul's prayer there at the end of, of chapter 3. He says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father. That's verse 14, sorry. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And I'm going to stop right there. And notice that phrase at the end of verse 19. That you, Paul, Paul's praying that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, that's kind of an interesting thought there. And the first thing I, I, I want to point out from, from this uh, prayer is, number one, that we need to be filled. And, and even as Christians, we need to be filled. And you say, well, well hold on. Aren't we already filled uh, as Christians? I mean, you look at verse 17. Do, doesn't, doesn't Christ already dwell in the hearts of believers? Well, yes. And, and aren't, aren't we already filled with the Holy Spirit? Aren't we a temple of, the, of God living inside of us? Well, yes. And yet it says here, you have to be filled. So we're, well, which is it? We're, we are filled, but we need to be filled. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. God is living inside of us. And yet, we need to be filled. Romans 5.5, 5, and just to, just to clarify this as well and highlight a couple of things, Romans 5.5 5, Romans 5, 5 says, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Just imagine that. God's love, here it is, being poured into our hearts. We have the Holy Spirit living where? Inside of us. We're filled. We're, God's love is poured into us. We're filled with God's love, and the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. We are filled, right? Amen? Amen. Ephesians 5.18 says, And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be what? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, which is it? We are filled, and we need to be filled. There, there are two aspects there, and it's, it's very similar. We talk about salvation as well. We are saved. If you believe, you have eternal life. You believe on the Son, you have eternal life. It's done. You have it. But we are also being saved from the power of sin. We are being saved, and one day we will be saved. We are, are, we are adopted right now. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit right now. Positionally, we are God's children. And yet, it hasn't happened yet. We're not in heaven yet. We're not free from this, this body here. We're not free from the old sinful nature. We still have that in us. So we are filled. We have the promise of God's love. We have the promise of eternal life. And we have it. He's given it. And we, we could look at other verses as well uh, of what God has given. But we, we are saved and we are being saved and we will be saved. And we are filled, but we need to be filled. And as believers, if we get our eyes off of God's love, if we get our eyes off of what He has done, of the message itself, and we only focus on what God wants us to do. Be a good Christian. Do these things. Memorize your verses. Do your quiet time. Go be a missionary. Go share the gospel. Lots and lots of things to do. Then Christianity to us becomes a, a, only a list of do's and don'ts. And those do's and don'ts are important. They're right, they're right here in Scripture. I'm not saying don't ignore that. God's commanded these things. We ought to pay attention. 
But we do that out of a full heart, out of a full life, because God has given us His love. And because we're filled with love, then it flows through us. And if you stop being filled, and you focus only on what you're doing, you're going to have symptoms. <laughs> lack of peace, lack of joy, lack of love, feeling empty, feeling stressed, overwhelmed. So the second thing I want to point out, is yes, yes, we need to be filled, but, but the second thing here is being filled does not come by trying harder. So which comes first? Okay. Loving God, doing the, obeying God, or understanding His love? Knowing His love. Which comes first? Well, some of you might know the verse of 1 John 4.19. Anybody? We love because He first loved us. What? Which is first? God's love first. And if we don't know God's love, then we are incapable of loving. So what should our focus be? Understanding, knowing God's love. That's foundational. Don't forget it. That's, that's how it starts. So the, the third thing here, so yeah, we need to be filled, being filled with all the fullness of God, that, that filled with God's love, it does not come by trying harder. Being filled, and this is right from verse 19, it comes through knowing the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Verse 19 says, and to know, to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that, there it is, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So if you don't know the love, then you can't be filled. Now, We've been saying this morning, Jesus loves me. And if I, if I went around and I asked every single person, you know, do you believe that Jesus loves you? Oh, yeah. Probably everybody would say yes. But do you really? Do, or are there symptoms in your life that you are doubting God's love? Are there symptoms in your life that you are not filled with that love, but filled with something else? And in, in confession, there are many times in my life when my understanding of God's love is way too small. I mean, how big is His love? And it, in, in, verse, uh, in, in, in the prayer, it says that, that you know the, the height and the width, the, the length, the depth of the love of Christ. How, so how high is it? How much does God really love you? Most of the time, our view of God's love is, well, um, it's like our love. And what's our love like? It's, kind of, it's like the if kind of love or the because kind of love. I'll love you if you do this, do that, don't do this. If you help me, it's kind of a tit-for-tat thing. If you, if you love me, then. And sometimes it's, it's I love you because. You know, because you're, you're nice to me, I love you. Because you're lovable, I love you. Because you look nice, I love you. Because you have that, or you, and I love you because. And usually we think of love that way, and so we, think, we naturally think God's love is like that too. God will love us if we're lovable and if we're good. And if we do all these things for God, and we memorize our verses, and we, we live for Jesus, then God will love us. Well, then, then you, we're not understanding God's love. God loves us not because of our performance. It's not because you're a good person. It's not because you're special in, in, in the sense that you've done something good or you, have the, you can do something. God loves you. And, and the way that God has proven that, Romans, Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates he shows His love for the, us in this. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You want to know if, if Christ loves us? Look at what He did. Look at our position. Look at our way of life when He died for us while we were yet sinners. Look at the context of Ephesians chapter 3. Look back to chapter 2. Were we worthy? 
Were we doing something good for God? That that's why He loved us? No, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Following the way of the world. We were under God's wrath. We were going our own way. We weren't, God is the, the king, the great king of the whole universe, and He created everything, and we ought to love and worship Him and obey Him in all things, and yet we have gone our own way and not done that. We've committed treason against the King of Kings, and we deserve His anger and wrath. We're under His punishment, and yet God loves us. That's God's love. It, it's not a small love. We don't love like that. God loves like that. Christ's love is not human love. Most of the time, our view of God's love is, is shallow. And uh, we, we think God's love is, is resentful, maybe begrudging, right? Sometimes we do this. Well, I, I love you, and I'll be patient with you. Uh, okay, okay, I'll love you a little bit more, but you know, you're not really good, so... Uh. And then all of a sudden... We snap. I'm done. I'm not patient anymore. <laughs> Our love is limited. God is love. Christ's love as well is free. We don't have to earn it. You can't earn it. You can't do something so that God will love you more. He gives you His love. It's a gift and it's yours. He loves us not because of who we are, but because of who He is. And that can never change. God does not change. He is always loving. And when I find myself struggling, one of the things that, that this past year that I've, I've tried to do just in my own heart, um, you could do this in different ways, but just, just to confess before God, God, uh, I know that you love me. And I know that it's not based on my performance. And somehow I get, got that confused. I want to know your love more. Help me to rest in your love. I know that you love me even when I'm messed up. I know that you love me. I know that you call me your child. I know that I'm safe with you. And these are, these are just basic things. They're just basic things that, that God, of who God is and of what He's done. This is, this is the gospel and somehow, we who have received the gospel, we believe, yeah, we're sinners. Christ died for me. I believe, so now I have eternal life. But then, now, now that we're a Christian, now we, now we have to live for Jesus. And now, God's love or His pleasure toward us is dependent on our performance. It doesn't change. He still loves you. So, my question for you is, is what are you rooted and grounded in then? The... Paul's prayer is that you'd be rooted and grounded in love. Rooted is the, the idea of like a, something that's planted, like a tree, in love. That's what, that's what you're, you're holding on to. And the nutrients comes from that into you. So you're filled then with love. And, and this grounded, you're rooted and grounded in love. Grounded is the, this foundation that you're laid on that. That, that's what you stand firm on. That, that's, your, that's your hope. That, that's what you go back to. That's your, that's your base uh, of, out of, of operation. That's who you are. And so, many of us are rooted and grounded in something other than love. And it shows. Rooted and grounded in fear. I, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm not good enough and God won't love me, I know that God loves me, but and it's just, just knowledge up here, but feeling-wise, I have to perform for Him. No. Maybe we're, we're grounded in, we're rooted and grounded in, in anger and frustration. Life's not going my way, and it's because of these people and those things happening, and, well, there's something more important. But if that's your foundation, you're going to always have frustration and anger. Maybe despair, rooted and grounded in despair. I've tried to be good, I can't, so I'm just giving up. I've tried to live life well, it, it's just, it's not working, and I'm done. Maybe you're rooted and grounded in, in distraction, in, in despair, in, in uh, worldly things. That this, is, this, is your, this is who you are. This is what you've, you've delved into to, to fill you. 
And if I'm filled with these things, then maybe I'll be happy. Maybe I'll be filled and, and I'll be good. But I tried God's way. It's not working. So I'm going to be filled with something else. Entertainment, pleasure, money, you, you name it. Maybe that's what you're rooted and grounded in. And, and the prayer is, and, and my prayer for all of us as well, something we ought to be praying for one another, is that we would be rooted and grounded in love. And that's something that I've seen in this church. It's, we can't really fully comprehend God's love just in and of ourselves, separately. I think it's something we have to understand together. And, and Ephesians chapter 4 talks about that, that we would together grow up into Him, be filled into the measure of Christ. That's, that, that's, that's what we're to do as a body. And I believe that, that this church has taught me so much about God's love. That the way that, that you love one another. Even when I was eight years old, the way that you ex ex accepted me into this, this family. Even when we came back here just, just this past week. That you guys, you worked so hard on the, on the annex and prepared everything and, and you poured love into that, that uh, building and you put food in the fridge and you've just been, just, just it's, God's love is flowing through you. But don't forget your source. Don't forget where that comes from. Don't ever start serving God and doing these things for God and not doing those things because he says don't and just, just keep doing that and think that that's what life is all about. It's not. It's, Christianity is more about receiving than giving. You have to receive first. And if you stop it, it's like the vine in John chapter 15. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. You're part of the vine. You are Jesus. He, he, he's, he's in you. You're in Him. But you can't do anything apart from Him. So receive. And as you receive, as you receive His forgiveness, and you understand what, what He's done, then you forgive. And as you receive His love, then, then you love. And you receive His grace, then you show grace. But if you ever say, I, I, can't, I, I, I can't do that, then you're, you're cutting off God's, that, that flow. It's not that God doesn't love you. It's that you're saying, no, I, I'm not going to be filled with that. So be filled. The result of knowing His love is being filled. And now, and I hope for you as well, you can rest in that. God loves me. It is not based on my performance. It's not based on what I do for Him. He just loves me. And you know what that makes me want to do? It makes me want to praise Him. It makes me want to tell the people about Him. It makes me want to live for Him. Don't get it the other way around. Do you know, do you know, really, this love that surpasses knowledge? Have you received it? So let, let it fill you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that, that each one hearing this message from your word, that all of us would recognize our emptiness, recognize that we need to be filled, and that we would confess that freely to you. Lord, I thank you that you allow uh, sinners like us to receive of your fullness. And that you wash us clean and, and you, you make us your children and, and, and now we're yours and we have everything that we need for life and godliness in, in the knowledge of Christ. And Lord, I pray that if anyone here has not accepted that gift, the gift of eternal life, knowing that, that Jesus is Lord, that He died on the cross for our sins, that He rose from the dead, that He has poured out His love on us and that it can be received simply through faith. I pray, Lord, that if they don't know that, they haven't accepted that today, they would, they would believe and receive the mercy and grace that you so freely offer. Lord, I thank you for your love. Help us as we, as we do. We, we seek to live for you. We want to love and obey you. Lord, we're lacking. Help our unbelief. Help us to, to see your love and to know your love in a deeper way and to know how, how big you really are and to know that you're able to strengthen us in every way, that you're not limited in that. Thank you for loving us even when we don't deserve it. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.